Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I have prepared something very special for you. I have another upgrade of one of my workstations. For today's video, is going to be the HP C440. And I am going to be upgrading the HP C memory cooler, the front fan, and I'm going to be installing a new graphics card. It's going to be the NVIDIA Quadro P4000. And I'm going to explain as well a little bit why I am doing these upgrades and how these upgrades can benefit you and your workstations depending on the hardware configuration that you have. So stay in the video if you want to learn more about this workstation. So for the video, I have three main components that I am going to be upgrading for my workstation. I have the uh, this front, uh, this is a front fan. This is going to be installed in the front chassis of the workstation, and I am going to explain why I am installing this. If you already or you usually know that all most of the computers that you buy, you buy them and they are already pre-configured with with fans and with cooling solutions and everything. But this workstation, uh, they can be Kind of tricky depending of the com of the initial configuration that you bought and this workstation is only is the configured it was configured at the beginning with just the basic workstation which is the cheapest model that you can get online and which is you can get it already about 150 us dollars 150 euros you can be you can buy the basic model and i'm going to explain why these upgrades they can be very cheap and a good solution for the future if you really want to keep upgrading your computer more, your workstation. So this is the front fan for the chassis. I'm going to install, I'm going to be installing as well the memory fan cooling solution. This is a cooling solution that has only actually two fans, and this is going to be conf this is going to be used. Why? Because when you have this kind of workstation, it has four channels and up to eight slots. The, when you uh, have populated the eight of the slots with memory modules, it's going to give you a kind of post error at the beginning of the, when you boot your computer. And it's going to tell you that when you have populated all the memory slots, it is recommended, not mandatory, but it is recommended to have the HPC memory cooling solutions to avoid any heating problems of your memory. So it is not mandatory, as I repeat, none of these upgrades, none of these two upgrades are mandatory for your main workstations, but it's a nice thing to have, as I said, if you really, if you want to really push the boundaries of what this workstation can do, which I already explained in my latest video, it is amazing workstation and why not? Let's try to push it to the max that we can. This is the memory cooling solution. I'm going to talk about prices a little bit. And for the, my latest update, I am going to update my computer, as I already mentioned in past videos, with an NVIDIA Quadro P4000. This is going to be the main graphics card for this workstation here in my, here in my basement. I think it's a mid-range, high-end, professional CAD graphics card, which I'm going to explain as well why I'm using this model in this workstation and what are the benefits of using such graphics cards for such workstation. So these are going to be the three updates for today and let's start. So let's start by removing the cover like always. Always be sure to be as well disconnected from, from the power. Don't forget that maybe you maybe sometimes you forget or something so just be sure. Uh, actually it's pretty easy the process. I have here now a, an AMD Radeon RX 550 and to be honest it's Pretty basic, it's really simple. And we don't need it anymore. And as I said, for, for this workstation, the important thing is just to make some CAD model, basic, and maybe some gaming as well when I'm here, or video editing as well when I'm here working in the basement. And I think this this graphics card is going to be a, pretty nice, a very nice improvement for the workstation, like an amazing improvement. We have four display ports, 1.4, and it has 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and it has 2340 CUDA core, something like that, which I think is pretty nice. This is from the Pascal generation, it is not from the newest generation, but it's a pretty good graphics card. 
So to install it is actually pretty basic, but we are not going to do this right now because we are going to install first of all the front chassis fan. This front chassis fan is going to be installed here because when you buy the basic model, I bought this basic model for like 180 euros and what I what it was really important at the time to, to buy in this and I really can recommend you when you buy or if you are willing to buy the 8, 4, 4, the 8 the HP 440 just be sure that you are getting the 700 watts power supply because the 700 power the 700 watts power supply is going to give you these two PCI Express six pin connectors which are the important thing in order to um, install some graphics cards very powerful graphics cards so that's a very nice point 700 watts 700 watts don't forget and then you get the two six pins PCI Express connectors so let's install this one so to install so install the front fan actually it's very it's very simple you have two small brackets here and you have two holes indentations in the panel in the chassis so you just need to uh, so press it down and then it fits perfect and then you have two small holes as well in this side in the front side of the panel you can remove this as well if you want to make it maybe a little bit easier so you can always see where are you working and then it just clips and that's all that's the only thing that you make to, that you need to do and of course don't forget to install the the power cable or the fan cable and that's it for the for the front chassis and then you're going to say but Jorge why are you installing this front fan why you are sp why are you spending money on this is as well because it the HPC 440 when you are trying to install graphics cards greater than 75 watts I mean graphics card that requires the PCI Express pins is going to give you a post error as well and this post error is not going to allow you to boot into the operating system and you are going to say Jorge but you need all, only need to press enter and then the error is gone and then you can bot in your operating system the thing is you need to imagine that imagine that you are doing something very important or you are working in a company or you have a production process that it goes to this computer or maybe this computer is a server it's an application server and this computer needs to be working 24 7. and imagine because there is a power shortage or your company was in the need to cut out the, the, uh, the electricity supply for, for, your, for your system or for the room and the system goes off and then you need to turn it on again but usually you work remote or maybe someone turns it on but they do not know that this post error exists and they do not know that the, that the workstations never went to the operating system because of this post error and sometimes it really does not allow you or block you to bot the operating system and sometimes if you are not in the operating system you need to mind that imagine that this is an application server and the application server is running one of the most important applications of your company of your small company of your maybe your mail server something like that or a, or a file system or a storage server for your small company and it goes off and no one remembers that you need to post into, into the operating system by pressing enter so it's something that is going to really slow you down downtime is going to be is going to be generating downtime maybe it's going to cost you money because the computer never went to, to windows or to linux or something so these are small things but i like to have it in case do i need it so let's go now with the cooling system with the cooling solution this is actually pretty easy there is no cables and this is going to be installing this is going to be installed only with this small connector here focus this is going to be installed only with this small connector and this goes directly to the main board and then the fans are powered and controlled by the main board which is actually i think looks pretty good looks pretty nice this is only as i said this is only when you have populated all the memory slots that in this case we have we have all the eight memory slots used so this should be pretty straightforward only press here take a look that's, that the connectors matches to the connectors in your main board and that's clip and this as well so that's pretty much for this 
which I think looks pretty nice as well. And now we can proceed with the installation of the, of the P4000 and it should be pretty straightforward. As I said, we only require one six pin connector and we already have the two free. So for this, we only need one slot. So it's just pressing and pressing again and then block the system PCI Express cards and then just plug it in and that should be done. We can al al always cable management here a little bit with the install bracket and that's all. That's all for the computer. So now we are done. We just need to install again the front panel, which is pretty straightforward as well. You just have three clips and that's all. And then the side panel again. And that's pretty much for now. Yep, now boot. And let's hope there is no post error anymore. Maybe it's going to tell you something that something was installed the first time that after you install the components, but should be. Yeah, now it's booting directly to Windows and there is no post error anymore. So that was the main idea. Of course, we, we don't have video drivers, but that's a, already a nice thing to have. Hi, so now I'm going to show you just a quick stress test or like a torture test of the computer now that we have everything installed and the upgrades are made. And let's see, let's see how it behaves the computer at maximum. We're going to stress the CPU. We're going to stress the FPU cache system memory and the GPUs as well. Here is hardware info. We're going to take a look in real time to the temperature. It OBS is as well running in background with the video recording with desktop recording. And then let's see how everything behaves now. We are going to be monitoring as well the CPU and the memory just, as, just that we can take a look if everything is working right. So let's start the test. And I hope the video still works after I start the test. Let's go to the temperatures. The core temperature are 64 degrees, which is pretty, pretty accept acceptable to be honest. For 18 cores, 100%, 36 threads, 65, 66 degrees is not really that much. Let's wait a few minutes and let's see how it behaves. You see the packages as well. I think the memory cooling solution is as well helping a lot to the CPU to get cooler. This is around 55. It being with 50 and 55 cel degrees Celsius, which as well is very, very acceptable. And let's wait maybe 10, 5, 15 minutes and let's see how it, how it behaves, how, how it develops. And this is the CPU temperature, 66 degrees, which is pretty, pretty acceptable as we said. And there is no CPU throttling. And the graphics cut is around 70 degrees now, which is also pretty standard. The Fans are now ramping, ramping up as well a little bit, but this is still pretty quiet to be honest. The computer is still pretty quiet. Maybe you can hear a little bit when I close the microphone. But it is really pretty acceptable, the sound as well. Temperature, we are still in the same zone, 66 for the CPU. Let's check again the memory to take a look of the memory cooling is working. 65, 62 degrees in the memory and 56 as minimum. The important thing here is that you can take a look as well to which dim are the hottest dims. And probably the hottest dims are the ones far away from the cooling system or from the fan of the cooling system solution. So let's take a look later what it is. But this is how it looks guys. I think it's pretty good. It's very quiet, the system, that is one of the main things as well. And I think the cooling solution is working pretty well. And the airflow is uh, in a very good shape inside the system. So why I'm doing this? Because my workstation, I in this workstation, I have the Intel Xeon E5 2699V3 with 18 cores and 36 threads in total. I have 64 gigs of RAM with eight models of eight gigabyte each. This computer can be expanded up to 256 GB of memory RAM with 32 GB modules. 
And maybe you will say, Jorge, but why spend money in the memory cooling solution? As I said, first of all, because the post error, it is very important that the computer boots directly into the operating systems, no matter what. And second, because computers can get really hot. You know, the main problem of high performance computing, even if this is a workstation, you say, Jorge, but it's only 18 cores. It, they can get hot if you really push them to the max. And you will say, Jorge, but you know, even playing games or edit videos in 4Ks or rendering videos, it is not that intensive. But those are normal things. And of course, I do edit videos here as well or in my main workstation, but those are, no, those are not the things that I mainly do. For example, if you are running an, an, a finite element simulation, it's going to take maybe, I don't know, a few hours. And these few hours is going to be 100% CPU usage, 100% memory usage, 100% graphics card usage. And those after hours, you need to mind that the, the chips can get hot and then you need proper cooling solutions in order to cool properly your system. That's why those kind of upgrades make sense for people that really need these kind of solutions. And, or you need to imagine, sometimes, for example, I remember a project that I just finished and maybe you can take a look into my research gate page now in this link, if you want to learn more about what I did the last time, these fluid flow simulations combined with the structural mechanics, fluid mechanics combined with the structural mechanics into a large deformation system. It took me around seven days. Seven days pushing my main workstation with 44 cores and 88 threads using my NVIDIA Tesla as a, as a GPU accelerator, 128 gigs of memory RAM, the 44 cores 100%. And it took me about seven days to compute the solution. Seven days non-stop, 100% computer usage. And of course the computers get hot. And this computer is also going to work maybe for not so heavy stuff, but it can compute this computer as well, the same solution that I got. Maybe it's going to take more time, but it's going to be reliable because it has proper cooling solutions for the memory, it has proper cooling solutions for the CPU, and it has proper cooling solutions for the graphics cards and for the main system, which is the main objective of this upgrade. So I hope you liked the upgrades. And if you have any questions about where, do you, where you can find these parts or how are you going to install them or if you really need them, please let me know in the comments what are your main applications. If you have these workstations, please let me know what are the main applications and usage that you have for this computer. I am really interested in all the things that you people can do when you have the right tools. You need the right tools to do the right job. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and until the next time.